Hi guys, today we'll talk about the MQ and Kafka. Let's discuss more this in next slide. This slide talks about the MQ and Kafka. So let's understand the MQ and Kafka one by one and then we'll reach a conclusion. So MQ is an enterprise messaging technology while Kafka event streaming technology. If you are purely looking for reliability, MQ is the option. If you are just looking for high throughput, then Kafka is the better option. So what does that mean high throughput? If let's say you have social media site, in a day you are generating terabyte and petabyte of data. That kind of information if you are going to capture, in that case Kafka is the better option. In that case MQ not be the right choice. What will happen in that case, a bunch of data is coming to support this MQ and the related middleware technology may be a little bit difficult. So better we can prefer go with the Kafka. Third option is that if you have the mission critical application and SCR delivery, then those kind of scenario you have to consider the MQ. So what does that mean? So let's say in a healthcare system where two systems are interacting to each other and doctor is in the is in surgery room, he is looking for a data so he can help the patient. If those kind of assured delivery we are looking, if, if data get lost, it can affect the patient. So if those kind of scenario is there or those kind of application is there, so better to go with the MQ. Now, if a scenario comes where you can accept some of the duplicate or loss of data, it doesn't mean that Kafka is losing any kind of data. But if scenario comes where you have to do some kind of predictive analysis, maybe reporting or maybe Power BI reporting or maybe a data science projection, artificial intelligence, those kind of data set kind of reporting you are looking. So maybe data loss, some of the data, the data loss you can, you can avoid or maybe some of the duplicate you can manage. If those kind of scenarios are considered, so we will always go prefer with the Kafka. So now talk about the next point. So data not need to be persisted longer time. So one of the uh, downside in the MQ, you cannot persist the data for longer duration. So what, have, what does that mean? So let's say data comes in the queue. Once your consumer is consuming the data, application is consuming the data will uh, remove from the queue. But uh, uh, Kafka, it's a, it's a reverse. In Kafka, what happens, right? So if you go to the Kafka technology, so you can, it depends on, again on your need. If you want to persist that data, maybe for a week or maybe a month, that kind of capability is there in the Kafka. So someone is looking for event history. So in Kafka, we can easily manage and consumer can go uh, last one week data and they can consume the data. So that kind of feature is there, but that is not true with the MQ. So that's where we told they not data not needed to be persisted. Coming on the next difference, what we have seen in Kafka, we talked about the topic. Topic can be further divided into a partitions. And number of partitions, well, let's say we example 32 partitions we are doing for improving the throughput or the performance. So that kind of capability is there, but it's talked about the topic. But if you're talking about the, purely on the MQ side, let's take an example on the IBM MQ here. So then you have to go with different kind of queue configuration. Message can, will come in local queue, then you have to send that data to different location, then remote queue will come in picture, then you have the transmit queue, you will have the alias queue, some message which is getting failed, it will go into the dead letter queue. So those kind of uh, queues configuration you have to understand in the MQ perspective. But compared to that Kafka, you just need to understand to topic and partition that will help. Learning curve will be a little bit easy on that side. So that is the one of the difference we have seen. The other difference what we have seen, uh, if you are talking again uh, one tool set, let's say in this example we are talking about the MQ, we have to take some licensing. Maybe uh, it depends, uh, once we are seeing the licensing, it can be subscriber mode also, but in Kafka you can get open source. And they also give vendor support if needed in the, your organization. But it is it initially it is a open source. And the good part is that both technology are asynchronous technology, whether it's MQ or the Kafka, both are asynchronous kind of technology. And Kafka is more suited for PubSub model, where one publisher is sending a data, I have a number of consumers, they are looking for the historic data, they are going to use the PubSub model. So, so if you see very closely, right, these two technology are very like a kind of complementary to each other. So if you see the world complementary to each other, they are complementing. They are not a competitor. So they can, in an organization, both technology can sit and they can serve the purpose. 
so that's where we talked about we talked about the mq right so let's say for example i have healthcare system where i think we uh, message is very critical we have to make sure the delivery if those kind of scenario comes then we have to go with the mq if you are talking to um, about the data platform where we have a streaming data terabyte of data petabyte of data is flowing and then we have to collect that information do kind of artificial intelligence data science those kind of uh, reporting need is required in that case we have to collect that information create a kafka so but in both scenario both kind of technology can support each other and and you can create a kind of service for, uh, using the kafka also you can create a kind of uh, integration service using the mq so these are the containers now one important thing what we have to remember let's talk this into next slide where we will see mq just say these are a containers right they are, they are collecting a data so let's say in mq we have we are collecting data in the queues and then we have a transformation engine transformation engine it is your publisher and then transformation engine can connect with the downstream application with different mechanism whether it's a api ap kind of tool set same way it goes with the kafka kafka topic also can receive the messages from the source publisher then you have the transformation engine between between transformation engine so it has the capability it has the rest api we can also connect to the spark in spark we can do streaming so we can stream the data and also we can process the data and then we can send that to downstream application right and with the help of both these technology we can create a service bus or maybe integration bus around the organization and which will help our organization i hope you understand the uh, basic difference between mq and kafka and the same time we have talked about so not a comp uh, competition between these two these two tool set are supporting each other thank you for watching thank you very much